YouTube. Here we go. Back in studio. No more Zoom, at least for now. <laughs> Let's hope. <that. laughs> yeah. yeah. Back in studio. Welcome, YouTubers. Hey, thank you for getting us to a thousand subscribers. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's awesome. That's ridiculous. That's great. Thank you so much. We got three, two. Welcome to Super Talk, the weekly podcast dedicated to news and reviews of comic book media on the big and small screen. This is episode number 13. I'm your host, Brian Professor Pettis, and with me, as always, my illustrious co host, Titanium, Tony Estrella. Professor! Titanium! Back in the studio, you're back from the quantum realm. Did yeah. you, are you dizzy? Are, how are you feeling? It's okay. You know, I, I spent some time with, with uh, <laughs> Sam and Bucky, and we're, we're doing okay now. So, That's yeah, no, no. It's, uh, it was, you know, good. Uh, you know, hey, you know, we, we don't want to do these remotes too often, but, you know, the fact that we can do them is, is good, you know, so. Just leveraging right. technology to help out the show, right? Well, you know, we want to be consistent. We want to make sure we've got new content for our listeners every week. Uh, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that that happens. And there's going to be weeks where one of us is going to be out of town because of family situations. And, and the fact that we have the technology to support that is great. So I'm not going to lie to you. It was lonely here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> the echo of your own voice made it seem a little weird, didn't it? It was a little weird, yeah. Yeah. Well, first, uh, we got a lot to get into this week. A lot of news and some reviews to do. So before we do, like we do every week, we want to thank our sponsors. First, Studio GG Studios. Home of the Man Band, Corn on the Cob. Check out their YouTube page, please. We put the link to their YouTube page in our show notes every week. These are our best supporters, our number one supporters, and our, our first and foremost incredible sponsor. So thank you, Studio G, for all the support you continue to give us. Yeah, absolutely. He pushes, um, he pushes our name out to his followers, and he's got a boatload of them. And it helps us. Uh, he's a big component in getting us to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, we appreciate it. God bless you, uh, Studio GG Studios. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, watch their videos and, jeez, uh, watch a commercial or two. Help a brother out, right? right exactly. And we also want to make sure that we understand and thank our listeners that have supported us directly through the Patreon. Patreon.com slash supertalk. This is a way that you can support the show directly. It costs $1 per episode to become a patron. We send you a nice thank you note, some stickers. Yeah. Really appreciate those who've supported us. And if you continue to do that, again, we're going to give back everything we get to our listeners. We're going to do some more giveaways and things like that. So thank you for those of you who are supporting us on patreon.com slash super talk. Yeah. Keep listening. Uh, and thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, please jump on that. Uh, at the end of the show, before we end the show, we're going to uh, announce another giveaway. Um, so please, uh, Listen to the show completely and watch the show, and uh, you might be pre uh, you know, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, to uh, Titanium is uh, stocking up on the swag, so we're, we're, we're definitely going to be continuing to do some... some oh, the swag ones. wagon rolled in. It was pretty... It was loaded. <laughs> the swag wagon rolled in. Awesome. Uh, so we've got a lot to get into this week. Let's, let's start. We'll get into the news and review section, and first and foremost, let's talk about the episode that just dropped of... Falcon and Winter Soldier, episode number two. Uh, we just finished watching the second episode together. I, I got a chance to watch it earlier today with my son, but uh, I'd love to hear what you thought. I mean, what'd you think? Again, the quality blows me away. The action scenes, the special effects, absolutely magnificent. What we were promised by Marvel when they said that they were coming out with these series was that it was going to be a movie in episodic format, right? We're going to get movie quality cinema delivered to us on a weekly basis in an episode and this show has delivered on that wandavision really followed kind of more of that sitcom feeling and we got a little bit of that movie quality stuff later on in the show when they right. ramped up the special effects yeah. a little bit but ever since the beginning of this show i really felt like i was watching an avengers movie and I i'm continually blown away by what they're able to do in a 45, 50 minute period of time. Are you starting to like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier a little more than WandaVision? Well, this is more my speed. I mean, this is more our speed. I think Marvel fans out there who have watched all of the MCU films to date, this is what we expected. This is the content we've expected. This is the characters we've expected. 
This is the format we've expected, and I think they're living up to it and exceeding that. Right. I mean, the fact that we haven't had a Marvel movie in theaters for a year and a half, yeah. and now we're getting movie quality content delivered to us at home, right. streaming, is, is amazing. And yes, to answer your question, this is what I've been craving for so long is yeah. we haven't, since Endgame came out, we haven't seen anything from Marvel. And this is really the first part of a quality content delivery system that was like, wow. It's like, it's filling that void that I think we've had for a long time. Well, I have to admit, WandaVision was shocking all though. I mean, it, they took a lot of chances. It was very unique, very unusual, uh, especially the sitcom kind of format that they went with. I, I thought it was brilliant and I, I liked it a lot, but you're right. This is kind of back to the old school the roots, action. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I like it a lot. Well, and I think we've seen also that WandaVision created so many questions every episode and left us hanging and there were so many unanswered questions that were thrown around the internet every week. We're not getting nearly as much chatter well, not on not just the internet. the internet, Professor. Right. You and I threw around a couple of right. theories, and we were right and we were wrong, but uh, you're right. Yeah, We're, we're not getting nearly as much conjecture or theory crafting or fan theories on the internet like we were with WandaVision. This is much more straightforward. Right. It's much more of a plot-driven you know, series. And again, if you look at the difference between a sitcom style of a show versus a drama style of a show, which is what this is, an action style show. There shouldn't be that many theories, but you know, there's some they're dropping enough Easter eggs every week to yeah. give us some some get some interest. They're moving the plot forward every week. And the fact that it's close to an hour is it's so satisfying. It's, nice. it's you get enough that you're not left hanging like, oh my gosh, it was only twenty two minutes. Are you kidding me? We're getting 45 to 47 minutes of quality content every week, which is awesome. Yeah, the buddy cop format is great. The lethal weapon type style is, I think, fantastic. Their chemistry is beyond. Uh, you mentioned Easter eggs. What do you got for us? Oh, there's a ton this week. I mean, we, we saw a lot this week that uh, harkens back to a lot of the stories back from the comic books, but also introduced some characters that we thought were going to be in the show and we're wondering when they were going to come out and we'll kind of get into some of those one of the things i wanted to mention to you first though is that a theory that i dropped last week was that we saw a lot of trailers for the show very early on yes and most of the scenes we have saw already in the been trailers, displayed we've seen in the show and if you remember last week i talked about the fact that i had a feeling that a lot of the trailer footage that we had seen is going to show up in the first two or three episodes of the show, and it has. I mean, there's maybe two or three scenes from the trailers we haven't seen yet in the show, but there's not a ton. No. And there's four more episodes left, so there's a lot of content to be delivered, and I feel like they're holding back a lot of the things that they, they don't want us to know. They didn't want us to know. They didn't show any of that in the trailer footage because they're going to be pushing some of this content way later on in the series here. Well, in that same uh, mindset that you just said, when the therapist was interviewing or doing her session with Bucky and Sam at the, in the prison, uh, in one of the trailers, she says, you know, how old are you? But in the show, I noticed that she didn't say that. So typical Marvel throwing us a curveball and not... Um, having things in the show that they put in the trailer, you know, some edited stuff that was out of the show that they make uh, and and put into the trailer. So good for them. But I, I think you're right. Yeah, it's been great. And, and so we'll just do a quick synopsis. The, the show starts off, we get a little insight into the Flag Smasher organization, right? Understand what they're all about. Uh, we find that... Professor, good or bad? The Flag Smasher. Well, I, what do you I, think? I think first episode, they were painting them as an enemy organization that needed to be terrorists. stopped. There's terrorists. They're doing something that's wrong and bad. And I think this episode really tried to paint them as kind of the anti-hero of, these are a group of people. They have special abilities and powers, and we're going to find out very quickly how they got those, I think. But they're super strong. They're super soldiers. Most of them are, if not all of them. But they're stockpiling vaccines and they're gathering, you know, they're not shipping weapons. You saw Falcon and Bucky drop in and say, hey, let's find out. These guys, looks like they're, they're shipping weapons. No, it was vaccines. 
And so they're, they're, they do seem, while they're operating outside of the law, it seems like their agenda is very good. Right. I agree with you. Um, I, I think they painted them as the big bad. And if they're the big bad, why is somebody else trying to kill them? You know, that was a little curveball for me that it kind of maybe uh, turned the light switch on to say that maybe they're not the big bad in this movie. Maybe somebody else is or some other organization is. And, you know, me mentioned the GR, what was it, the GRS? The Global Reformation Service or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically a government organization that was founded to help the recovery after the blip, right? right. So they're in charge. It's a government organization that's in charge of uh, all the people that were that became refugees after the unblip, you know, when you know, when they came back to life, you know, people had no homes anymore. Right. They had nowhere to go. And there's so a government... this organization helped people after the blip. And the flag smashers came out and said that organization is focused on helping the people that came back. They're not focused on helping the people that never left. Right, they and survived it. The, 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 survi the ones that were there the whole time. Yeah. And they were more interested in either elevating the power of those individuals that came back had before or putting those people back into power that maybe lost that power. And the Flag Smashers are like, you know, look, these we've been around the whole time and now all of a sudden a lot of stuff's being taken away from us because just because we were blipped away. Right. right. One world, one people. That's their motto, right? Yeah. So interesting, though, the show started off with a, a real life introduction of the new Captain America, John Walker. Uh, what we've been told in the show somewhat they did a little bit of a diversion from the comics john walker from what we what we understand he's just a regular army soldier not enhanced from exactly from the, what we've been led to believe so he, far. he says look i had i don't have super strength i don't have super speed i'm just a no super tech he compared himself to tony stark and banner right? right he said i don't have any of that stuff i'm just a, a normal everyday guy the good morning america uh, hostess who was inter interviewing him said, "Look, you know, you're 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 not giving yourself justice. You've won three medals of honor. Which, listen, people, that would never happen. One person winning three medals of honor just would never happen. So he's a decorated soldier. Decorated soldier. He's been through some shit. He's definitely been elevated to this position for a good reason, right? They're telling us this is a guy that is a model soldier that served his country very well. Um, he was given this opportunity." He says, I don't have any special skills, but she said, well, look, you know, you passed all the tests. You have great agility of great, you know, you know, you, you passed all the tests. So if anybody who's not enhanced to be Captain America, you were the guy. Um, they showed scenes of him tossing around the shield between different targets and stuff and was able to catch it and throw it. And, right. And so he's, he's definitely skilled. He's a, he's a highly skilled individual. But we don't know if he's enhanced yet or not. He's... He's told us he's not. He and, said he's not. But. <clears throat> right. And what we've seen in the show leads us to believe that he's not either. Um, right. You know, when... Well, he fought the flag smashers well, pretty so, well on top of those trucks. But so did Falcon. And he's not enhanced. Yeah. Right? So... He got I, his ass kicked a little more right, than If you remember, did. he got punched off the, the truck. Yeah. He tried to punch one the girl and he tried to punch her... And she just grabbed his arm and, and you know slashed him off the end of the truck. Okay. So that was an interesting scene, getting introduced to him and understanding where he came from. Uh, went back to his old high school to be introduced, and it was you know it was a great uh, actor. Fo I thought star. he did very good. I, I I thought he portrayed John Walker and uh, clever, very clever. Yeah, and I, I think the way that they brought him into the mix, right? We see. Uh, Falcon and Bucky, we see we Sam and Bucky go off to Germany to confront the Flag Smashers. Great, as you mentioned, Tony, great chemistry between the two of them. Uh, you know, awesome. Falcon mentioning it's it's one of the big three. It's aliens, androids, or, or wizards, and, and and it was just a great scene between us. What do you mean wizard? There's no wizards. What, what about Strange? Gandalf? You think we're finding Gandalf? That was hilarious. <laughs> Awesome. I thought it was fantastic. Their banter and their chemistry is absolutely fantastic. But Bucky then goes with Sam. They right. confront the Flag Smashers. They end up getting in a, a, a fight with them on top of these trucks that are shipping this this vaccine. Um, find out that they're super, all super soldiers that they're fighting. And they're getting their butts kicked until... Cap Reminiscent of Age of Ultron. The fight on top of the truck. Right. The Captain America. I mean, that kind of quality... Of well, choreography, Cap, Cap showed up, and all of a sudden his shield's getting tossed all over the place and knocking people over. And and uh, I feel weird calling him Cap. I, I right. just feel dirty. The new Cap shows right. up, right? But 
But yeah, he joins the fight, which we never saw in the trailers, but it was a really cool surprise to see him there yeah. fighting alongside them. And his his partner, Lamar Hoskins, uh, which you can see in, in, in the comic that I have sitting here on the table, for those of you on YouTube can see this, when the new Cap was introduced in the comics, he did have a new Bucky, and the new Bucky was Lamar Hoskins. Yeah. Uh, Codename Battlestar, oh, that was his name when he was with uh, Unlimited Class Wrestling. He ended up becoming Battlestar later on. But he shows up as well, and the two of them are fighting alongside Sam and, and, and Bucky. And, you know, all of a sudden they... He all... calls himself Battlestar at one point, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. He, and, and, and Bucky's like a Battlestar. All right, so that's it. Stop the, stop stop the car. Stop the I'm getting out. I'm done. Right? But uh, <laughs> Sam and, and Buck are, are very, uh, I will say, reluctant to accept him as... You know, look, just he said... Bucky said, just because you have that shield doesn't mean you're Captain America. And John Walker said... I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be Steve. Right. I'm not trying to be that. I'm trying to be the best Captain America I can be, and you know, it seems like at this point in time his intentions are good. We just don't know. You know, there might be so some. Got, okay, what kind of vibe you got from a professor? Like, what do you think? What's your opinion on John Walker episode two? What what direction do you think he is? So, I'm fighting the history I know of him. See, that's in, the problem. In, in in the comic books, right? Yes. So and and also I can't help but feel the show is going to have a big twist with him at some point in time. Sure. So you mentioned that it seems, at least at this point in the show, he's not enhanced. He has no super strength. He's not a super soldier, and neither is is Lamar Hoskins, who was his, his partner. Right. Um we know, you and I both know, that in the comic books, both of them were enhanced right. by the power broker. And both of them got super strength. And so the question is, do they have it and they're hiding it? Or do they not have it and they're going to get it at some point in time? Or is the fact that they don't have it going to lead to their demise? Right. Um, you know, I, I gave you a theory earlier this week. I have a feeling... We don't see him in a lot of the trailers and scenes we haven't seen. I have a feeling... This version of Captain America may not last very long in this show. Are they going to Game of Thrones him? You know, again, it wouldn't surprise me. Kill off a major character early? Well, it wouldn't surprise me. Professor. And the reason behind the theory is that, again, the trailer footage that we saw showed him every scene, almost every scene we've seen him in the trailers has already occurred. Okay. There's not a lot of trailer footage with him later on in the show. That's number one. Number two, we know at some point in time, Sam, Sam gets his shield, shield back. Yeah. Because we see him tossing it around in sure. his front yard, his house in Louisiana, and we see Bucky there helping him figure out how to use it. Right. So somehow, some way, they get the shield back. How would that happen if he's still alive and he's still Captain America? I have a feeling that potentially the fact that they're not enhanced may lead to their demise. Now, does it mean that he wouldn't get enhanced in the future and become... U.S. agent and a kind of bad version of of Captain America, like he was in the comics. I don't know. Maybe that's the direction they're going, but I just don't know what's going to happen with this version that we're seeing right now. It, a lot remains to be seen there. I think Marvel is taking creative liberties, and they are changing a lot of the comic book um, kind of layout and format. And I, I mean, you can see it with the Flag Smashers, right? Flag Smashers was like one guy. It was a character. And, and yeah. now they've created a whole group called the Flag Smashers, which is great. Uh, and, and I think it works. I, I think Marvel is taking creative liberties. And I think you could be correct. I think what we think is going to happen uh, might not. Well, and there's also, you know, you mentioned last week that you know, Lieutenant Torres may, is he shady? Is, is there something else going on with him? He always right. seems to know a little bit more than he's leading on yes. to. And he's always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Right. And in this episode, you know, he was very quick to um, endorse the new Captain America. He's like, oh, it seems like a nice dude. Yeah. It seems like a good guy. Um, I have a feeling that the government is doing things that we're not aware of to the extent where we saw on the show the release or at least exposure of the character the power broker and we have some time later on the show dedicated to talk about who the power broker is the flag smashers who have special abilities they are all super soldiers and sam and falcon are concerned they're super soldiers how do they get these powers what's going on what's how, what, how did this happen right 
They're more concerned about the serum, how they got their abilities, than they are about their activities. Now they are, right? Yeah. Now they're they're more concerned about the fact they're super soldiers versus what are they shipping, what are they right. smuggling, whatever. And I think that's why they went to see Isaiah, right? So that was a huge. That's the, one of the big, huge Easter eggs in the show. So after they get their butts kicked on top of the truck, Sam and Bucky get back on the plane, and and Bucky's like, you know, there's somebody you need to meet. Yeah. And they go to Baltimore. And he introduces him. We get to go to a house in Baltimore. A young child, young kid, who we believe is Elijah or Eli Bradley, uh, the grandson of Isaiah Bradley. But Eli becomes part the of patriot. the Young Avengers. Yeah, a patriot, right? The patriot, the, patriot. the character of the patriot. But we see a young, a we young talked man, about him before in our show. A young man uh, answers the door. There's nobody but named Isaiah here. Buck says, "Look." Tell him the guy from Gojang, you know, the bar at Gojang is here. Well, Eli says, you're not getting in this house, which leads me to believe that... But we don't know it's Eli yet. By the way, we never heard his name and he was never introduced I, as Eli. I'm I'm not just assuming, I'm because the casting of Eli Bradley is that actor. That so I know that that's why I'm assuming that. But I think that. purposely Marvel did not expose him as Eli and say his name was Eli purposely at this point in time. In, in the, the show. show. Okay. Right? Okay. But we, we understand that Isaiah Bradley's there and, and Buck introduces Sam to Isaiah and says, Isaiah's a hero just like Steve was. He was somebody that Hydra feared. He's, you know, a super soldier. We saw that because he grabs a, a, a can off the table and throws it in the wall and it sticks into the wall so you know he's, he's enhanced. Um, and he mentions that he was a hero and he fought the winter soldier and tore half his arm off and, you know, but in, as a reward for his heroism, heroic, heroic acts, he was thrown in jail. And that's very similar to what happened to that character in the comic book. So, well, didn't he steal a Captain America uh, uniform yeah. and shield so that's what when happened. he went to fight and that's when he came back, he was charged with. So in the comic books, Isaiah Bradley was the black Captain America. It, it is a horrible, horrible story. I mean, let me just give you the background of Isaiah Bradley. So after Dr. Erskine, who developed the super soldier serum, used it on Steve Rogers to become Captain America, Dr. Right. Erskine died, Captain America went into the ice. They knew that the ability to create super soldiers was, could happen. Could happen. It's a reality now. So... The U.S. military said, we need to figure out how to do this again. Right. They took 300 black or African-American soldiers and put them into a super soldier program in the military. This was so secretive that they sent letters to every one of those soldiers' families to tell them they were dead. Because they knew that they may not survive this experiment. Right. They experimented on all 300 of them. And only a like handful, th three or four of them, yeah. came out of that and were successfully enhanced through this attempt to create, recreate the super soldier serum. And Isaiah Bradley was one of them. He ends up getting probably the most successful one. Well, he was definitely successful in so much in, that they dropped him into Nazi Germany. And this again, this is the comic books, not this show. So they dropped him into Nazi Germany to go to a concentration camp and kill. A doctor, a Nazi doctor, who was responsible for creating a super soldier serum for the Nazis. So they knew that the Nazis were going to try to create super soldiers as well, which is how Bucky ended up becoming a super soldier. Correct. That, that, that's what happened. Yeah. They went to find he. They sent him in behind enemy lines to find this doctor and kill him. And to do so, he stole the Captain America uniform and the original Captain America shield, not the vibranium one we know of, but the one that right. we saw him wearing in the first movie. Yeah. Stole both of those. Went in as Captain America, the black Captain America, was very successful, killed the doctor, did everything he was supposed to, but then they, when they brought him back, he was court-martialed. Well, he was captured by Germans, and then he was rescued, and then, right? Right, but when he got back, he was court-martialed. Court-martialed, yeah, and for stealing it. For stealing the uniform. And so they put him in prison, and that's what he was saying in this episode. He was in prison for his heroic acts, which yeah. was crazy. And then he talked about how when he was in prison, all they did was experiment on him and take his blood and and all these crazy things. So we know there was a super soldier after Captain America. It was Isaiah Bradley. And we saw him in this episode. So Buck was introducing Sam to him saying, look, there's more super soldiers like you and me out there. How right. did this happen? 
And Isaiah wanted to have nothing, nothing to do, to do with, with him. him. Right? He's like, get out of here. I don't want to have anything to do with you guys. Yeah. So now they're at a loss. So like, what do we do next? Great introduction to that character, though. Well, Great again, huge Easter egg to the fact yep. that it was Isaiah Bradley, black Captain America. And Back we know in the day. His grandson, Eli, who we think is the gen- the young boy that, that answered the door, ends up becoming super patriot. Can you just give me that, Professor? Give it to me. Well, it is. So you were asking, does he already have powers? So... Elijah Bradley, Eli, became the super patriot in the Young Avengers. He wanted to, so badly to follow in his grandfather's footsteps as a super soldier and become the patriot character. Was it a blood transfer? Did he go to the power broker? So initially, when he was in the Young Avengers, he was taking MGH, mutant growth hormone. So he was getting his super strength. I take fish oil. Is that anything <laughs> like that? It's close. Okay. It's close. All right. It's close. But he was taking a drug called MGH, which is mutant growth hormone, which was temporarily giving him super strength. So every time they would go into battle, they would you know go into some conflict, he would take this drug, which would temporarily enhance him. He'd drink a Red Bull. It was basically that. And Wiccan, funny enough, one of the, the children of, of Wanda Maximoff, found out that that's how he was getting his super strength was through taking drugs. And they eventually kicked him out of the Young Avengers because of it. Like, you don't deserve to be here. You're not, you know, a super soldier. You're not enhanced. You're basically enhancing yourself through the use of drugs, which we're not going to condone. Great. He gets kicked out of the Young Avengers. Later on, he ends up, like, Captain America's in a battle. He ends up showing up and jumps in front of a bullet for Captain America. He gets shot. Oh, boy. Goes to the hospital... And Captain America is so distraught that he was going to go there and help try to save the kid's life and give him a blood transfusion. And when he shows up, Isaiah Bradley, his grandfather, is already there giving him a blood transfusion. And that's how he ends up getting, for duration, the duration, uh, super soldier powers. He right. ends up getting the super soldier serum in him through a blood transfusion he gets from his grandfather. It'll be interesting to see how the MCU handles that whole... Yeah. kind of transfer of power. It'll be interesting. Yeah. But I still believe that that was Eli Bradley, and yeah. I think that's And it, so. I think we're going to see that play out. Because I hope you, so. You've always theorized that they are setting up some form of the Young Avengers, and we've seen it in the introduction of the characters that all the characters that are going to be in the Young Avengers are either have either been released... Or coming out. Or they're coming, yeah. right? So we know... Um, Eli- we're hoping that Elijah Bradley, who becomes a patriot, is here... Wicked and Speed, we saw in WandaVision. We got Kate Bishop, who's going to be in the Hawkeye series. Right. We've got a Ms. Marvel coming out later on this year. So we've got the, all these the Middle characters. Eastern superhero, right. Ms. Marvel. We've got all these. Not ca- hulking, but that is yet to come. Hey, let me ask you a question. Um, any scrolls in this episode? What do you think? Gotta be, right? You know, the Professor, way. Professor, hey, kids, take out your notebooks. <laughs> the way that we've been told these series are going to fall in line with what's happening in the movies we understand that there's a series coming out next year late next year called secret invasion and the secret invasion storyline in the comic books was really about the fact that scrolls have been on earth for a long time and they've been playing characters that we know so much so that some of the superheroes that were on the avengers were actually scrolls right and the Secret Invasion show is coming to Disney Plus next year. And that show is supposed to set up some shows later on. So the question, we're always going to be asking that question. And I think the educated fans are going to be saying, what characters could be scrolls, scrolls. in these shows for That's the next what I'm year asking. And That's right. I think in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, who? Is Haskins a scroll? Uh, I don't know. Because he's, he's John Walker's boy. But I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It, I've always got that in the back of my mind, but I, I just interesting. You saw, we saw it in Wandavision. They had it up on the whiteboard in Wandavision, or there's scrolls and all these right. other things. And we saw a scroll show up at the end of Wandavision, which yeah. is funny enough. Yep. So that's always got to be a thought in the back of our minds. Um, when that when that story came out in the comic books, it was really enlightening to find out that characters that we loved had died, and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, Hawkeye got killed. Well. He was a scroll, so he really didn't die. The original Hawkeye was oh, has been alive the whole time. He's just been like hidden, you know. Right. It, it's crazy stuff. So yes, I mean, who knows who could be a scroll? I and, love it. I love that mystery that they've woven into this series, 
and all the series that are forthcoming. So We've talked about some of the, you know, the cheat codes, right? So the scrolls are a cheat code that the MCU can use to explain why certain people die or certain people came back or were dead before because, oh, well, it was the scroll version of that character that died, right? So, right. Um, but yeah, great Easter egg for, for Isaiah Bradley. We did also see um, some, some interesting plot points around where they're going to go next. So the fact that they're kind of at a loss of what to do next uh uh the new captain america and and uh the new bucky or i won't call battle star you can call him battle star star don't be Um, scared so they they try to convince sam and and bucky to work with them and they're like look we're free agents you know we don't have government regulations holding us down we can do stuff on our own we're better off not working with you and you see you you see john walker say well just stay out of my way right so you can see kind of the the part of him that's kind of the bad guy. Reminiscent of the comics, right? Right. Well, even in the beginning when Haskins comes in, when he's in the high school locker room before they introduce him onto the field, he says, you can't punch your way out of things anymore. Right. So there's some edge to him. I'm I'm not convinced he's, he's the comic book U.S. agent John Walker, uh, you know, my justice is to kill and punish yet, but... He does have we'll an see. overwhelming, overwhelming access and power as a government figure. I mean, he's getting, yeah. you know, Bucky oh, out of jail. Right. Got Bucky out of jail. Oh, yeah, no problem. He, he's not going to be able to stick to his uh, routine of, of therapy. So just let him let him out. We'll give yeah. him one more session, and then, right. then all of a sudden he'll be okay. Yeah, he'll yeah. Be, he's too he's big too of an valuable. asset. Yeah, right. that's crazy. And the fact that he... He was tracking Red Wing, Red Wing yeah. right? Oh, Did you catch who, that? By the way, Red Wing got destroyed. How crazy was that? <laughs> that was a great scene. That, that was, was funny. Scene. Yeah, Bucky's like, hey, I've always wanted to do that yeah. as he's getting his ass kicked. But um, they're tracking Red Wing. I mean, it's government-issued tech, and Torres, maybe well, that's why he was grabbing it? Maybe, I, who knows? I don't know. I'm, I'm fixated the, on that for the some The two reason. big, big final Easter eggs in the show that we got, the first one, the introduction, or at least knowledge of a character called the power broker so yep. the the flag smash organization was putting all their stuff onto an airplane they were going to be leaving and they're getting texts from people where you stole something from me that and i'm going to find you and kill you and then all of a sudden they find out that the that they've been found the the power brokers people have found them they said that so yeah. we know that those we know there's the a character broker. called the power broker and they and were in military uniforms that's Great point there, Tony, that those people showed up. They were in military uniforms. Right. And so the question is, is the power broker working for the government somehow, some way, or sponsored by the government somehow, some way? And that's going to be an interesting thing we're going to see going forward. So the introduction of that character was huge in this show. But then at the end, we hear Sam and Buck say, well, what's next? We don't know what to do next. And he says, I know somebody who knows a lot about Hydra. Hydra supposedly had a lot to do with what's going on and may have some insights into what's going on with the super soldier program. We got to go talk to somebody and they're like, no, 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 we're not going to do it. It's like, yeah, we're going to have to go see Z. You're going to get, you're going to sit in a room with him. You know what happened last time when you sat in a room with him. Right. So, uh, they set up at the end of the episode. We see Baron Zemo, uh, in a cell in his, uh, where was he? He was in a cell in was it Prague or some some somewhere in Germany? I thought was or, it still or Germany, Austria, or somewhere that, yeah. that wherever the the if anybody Civil knows War. where that statue or that um, in in the middle of the road where that statue was, can you comment in the YouTube video or let us know on uh, Twitter uh, super po- uh, super super talk pod uh, on Twitter and let us know where, what city do you think Zemo's in? It was the That's city. a good question. We don't know. We would love to know. So please comment and, and let us know where Zemo is. It was a city in Civil War where they, you know, had that big scene yeah. at the top where, where, you know, Cap was holding the helicopter when, yeah. when, when the Winter Soldier was trying to fly away. So, so, so we got introduced to Zemo. We know he's going to be in the next yeah, episode. And we feel that, that that's going to be a big part of the next episode, sure. is them confronting each other. And we know that Zemo's on um, a me- his, uh, Bucky's amends list, so that yeah. he has to, that's somebody he has to confront at some point in time. So that's a huge Easter egg. So Exciting. we're looking forward to next episode. It's, it's going to be great. And they mentioned Sharon in, uh, in the episode, too, so we know we're going to see her yeah, soon. Yeah, we know she shows up at some point in time, and, and Sharon Carter... Uh, 
they sh- they talked about the fact that last time they stole the shield that she became an enemy enemy of the state and so maybe she's been kind of operating off the grid for a while too so hopefully she shows up as well so the topic of the week is um we'll talk about the power broker a little bit later okay because yeah. i yeah a little bit later because i got some theories about the power broker. okay so let's get into the rest of the news for the week we had a t- Ton of stuff hit the wire this week. Wow, we sure did. So uh, people, listen up. This is important. We're gonna enlighten you on a lot of stuff that we found out through multiple sources. So the biggest announcement has to be the announced delay slash re-release of Black Widow. So we were surmising was was Marvel going to stick with their May release date of the Black Widow film? We were thinking it's very ambitious. And they've been very reluctant to talk about whether it's going to be in the theaters or online or both. The words game time decision was used. Yeah, but they came out and officially said this week that the release date for Black Widow has officially been pushed to July. So July 9th, it will be coming out. Black Widow July 9th. And the other big announcement was that it will be simultaneously released in theaters and on Disney Plus with Premier Access. So what that means is, if you want to go see it in the theaters July 9th, you can. Which we you, will. You, you will be. Yeah, we will. Promise me. Yeah, we. Of course. Of course. I'll, I'll, I'd see it tomorrow. No question. Um, but yes, you can go into the theaters July 9th and see it in the theaters. But if you would rather watch it at home, you will be able to watch it at home on Disney Plus with Premier Access. What that means is. You pay thirty bucks, twenty nine ninety nine or twenty nine ninety five, or whatever they're going to charge for it. You pay the thirty dollars, you can stream it at home uh, and watch it there. Great decision to do both. I thought it was a great decision, but the fact that they pushed it back did cause a little bit of delay in a couple, another movie at least, um, which is very disappointing. But the fact that they came out and formally announced it is huge. At least yeah. we know now. At least we know. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, and the fact that they're releasing it in both the theater and on Disney Plus. I feel more confident that they're not going to delay it anymore. So the the other announcement that came along with this was the delay of the Shang Chi and the and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie was delayed until uh, September. So uh, that was the movie that was on the slate for July. Uh, Black Widow was going to be May. We had Shang Chi in July. Shang Chi has now been pushed to September. Disappointing. And as yeah. a matter of fact, uh, the actors from the Shang Chi movie want the trailer to be released as soon as possible because they're just all excited about at least starting to promote their movie, even though it is now being delayed. But they're excited about it. Look, that movie's done. It's ready to go. Yeah. But the fact that it's been delayed two months is disappointing, but... It's kind of screwing up my summer, Professor. <laughs> to be honest with you, well, I, mean, I had... Here's the good news about all this. Okay, we is were, there good news? Yeah, we were okay. fearful that this was going to be another two-month shift to the entire... MCU release schedule and that's not the case so that's the most exciting news about this while Black Widow is getting pushed back two months and while Shang-Chi is getting pushed back two months the rest of the schedule is staying on task so we know we're getting Black Widow in July now we're getting Shang-Chi in September the Eternals movie that was on the slate for November is still on the slate for November that has not shifted that has not moved so we're finally going to get that movie as and Spider Man in December and Spider Man uh, No Way Home. There's a, fu- a formal title that is still going to be released in Christmas. So just give me some trailers, Marvel. Jesus, give me some trailers. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, you, give me, you know give me Chang Chi, give me the Eternals trailer, something. Uh, so yes, uh, that the good news is that the rest of the schedule was not affected, and the Disney Plus schedule wasn't affected. Here's another good piece of news. Ready? Right. You want me to hit you with this? Hit it. Super Talk's got some exciting shit going on in May then, right? Yeah. So If we have some time. So we were very excited about the fact that we were going to have new content every back week. Back to back. Back to back. Every week we're going to get Falcon and Winter Soldier through the end of April, early May. We're going to get, we're going to get the Black Widow movie. And then that was going to go right into the Loki series in June. Yep. Well, now we're going to have like a month of no new content. But that just means all the things we've been planning around scheduling guests, special guests to come on the show to talk about things that we're excited to talk about when no new content is out there is going to be a great time for us. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to line up some guests. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we've It'll been, be fun. It'll be different some... for us. It'll be challenging. No, it'll be fun. It'll be fun? Yeah. We'll, or challenging? We'll, it'll be both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be both. I love it. 
right. Yeah, so that was a huge announcement this week. But uh, hey, you know what? I think we all knew it was coming, and I'd rather get it earlier than later. You know, I'd rather if they had done this like at the end of April, like a week before the movie was going to come out, and they made this announcement. Well, you and I would have been so distraught because we were like, "Oh, we're going to the theaters next week to see Black." We'd Widow. have bought our tickets already, right? Right, but a now week that, before the movie comes out, we get our tickets before then. Right, so the fact that it's been announced now is great, and at least we know. Okay, so, yeah, that's good. All right, trying to think positive. All right, so we talked last week at, to some length about the the Snyder Cut. Um, if those of you haven't watched it on HBO Max, go it's and watch it. It's worth a watch. And they did release another version of that movie on HBO Max. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a version in black and white only. It's called the Snyder Cut Black Edition. Oh. And it's black and white only. Wow. Uh, very cool if you just want to watch that movie in black and white. I've, and I've gone back and I've watched a, a couple of my favorite scenes over again because I was like, did I see that right? Was that as cool as I thought it yeah. was? And I watched it again, especially the, the Steppenwolf, like... Death scene. Death scene. <laughs> that was great. That was so badass. And then the 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 flash scene where he turns back time. You, you got to watch that again. It was. I mean, it is. So man. the the black edition, the black and white edition of the movie, did have a different ending scene. So uh, that ending scene that we saw in the movie, where the Joker and Batman were talking to each other about, you know, you know he. Batman was like, I'm going to kill you slowly because Harley Quinn told me. That whole that scene was one of the new scenes that Snyder filmed for the Snyder Cut. Uh-huh. They filmed like three or four versions of that final right. scene. And there's a couple of different editions of that final scene oh, now really? in the new... in The new the apocalyptic yes. the dream sequence. Yeah, a, couple, a couple of different things they say to each other. Yeah, oh. so there's been some changes to that. I'm going to have to watch that. Substantial, but... Here's kind of some of the disappointing news is that we were always wondering, well, if the Snyder Cut does well and it's really well accepted and people like it and like this new vision that Snyder was painting, does DC have plans to move forward with the vision that he had? And and, And they were very clear about this. And they said that this week they came out and announced that this was a great epic film and we're glad that Zack Snyder had a chance to show Thank his Thank you Zack Snyder. Great job. We'll call this the end of his trilogy. Yep. And his trilogy was Man of Steel, Batman v Superman and Justice League. That's the end of his trilogy and they came out and exclusively said we have no plans to move forward with any any future projects re- revolving around this vision that Zack Snyder painted. Yeah, the lady that's in charge of Warner Brothers made it very clear and part of the reason why she made it clear is uh, the fans and their threatening manner right. and their uh, abusive language to her and threatening other executives at their homes. <laughs> I mean, these rabid fans that actually got the Snyder Cut made actually might have been the demise of moving forward with the vision. It's, it's unfortunate that had this version of the movie. I think she's overreacting. I think it's bullshit. Well, I I think Marvel or Warner Brothers had chosen to move on from Zack Snyder a long time ago. Right. And they're just confirming that that decision right now. I think they gave him some opportunity to paint his full vision. And had we gotten this movie in the theaters and had it done much better in the theaters, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. The fact that this was kind of like a a mulligan. Oh, yeah. Well, what you saw really wasn't what we meant to show you. Let me show you what we really meant. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, Warner Brothers is like, we've already moved on. Yeah, that cliffhanger that Zack Snyder put you on, you're going to stay there for a right. very long time. You know, here's a here's a theory for you. Zack Snyder moves to Marvel and does a Mephisto. <laughs> <laughs> Mephisto, movie. Mephisto movie, right? Zack well, Snyder, in his vision, moves to Marvel and they put him in charge of a character. How cool would Zack Snyder's Nova be? I would Badass. not. I would not put that past Marvel. Now, Zack Snyder, I, I think at this point in time is not very happy with Warner Brothers because of all this. Um, but yeah, I, I think we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But here's what we know: what's coming from DC coming forward. They they came out during the same announcement. Basically, said here's what's on the slate. Here's what's happening. Yeah, to get people excited after that news about you know. Booting and kicking Zack Snyder to the curb, 
They had some exciting news. Okay. Yep. So we 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 know the Suicide Squad's coming to HBO Max in August. We got a trailer. Got the trailer for that today. Yep. So we find there's a red band trailer. We know the movie's going to be rated R. The trailer had some gruesome scenes in it with King Shark just eating people, which is great. Tearing them to pieces. Oh, it was awesome. Some John Cena's language. character. Uh, the he might Peacemaker. be my favorite character. Oh, my God. You could just see some of his scenes. Now, I wonder awesome. they're going to do a separate show with him. They have confirmed that, by the way, that Peacemaker is going to have his own series on HBO Max. It's going to be a series on HBO Max, similar to what Disney Plus is doing with their, 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 their Marvel series. He's going to have his own series on HBO Max. So we know those projects are coming. So Suicide Squad is coming. We know Peacemaker series on HBO Max is coming. We know the Batman, the the Matt Reeves version of Batman starring Robert Pattinson is coming. It's not coming till March of next year. March of 2022 has now been pushed back to March of 2022. That was supposed to come out later this year, but now it's being pushed back. So we know that's coming. I didn't know that. That's yeah. that's upsetting to me. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's wow. March of next year. So good news is it's coming. Bad news is it is an alternate universe version of, of Batman. So it's not any... He's much younger. Yeah, yeah. No continuity with what's going on in the DCU right now. How they combine those. Maybe the Flash movie will figure that out. And that's the other one. So the Flash movie we know is in pre-production right now. They're going to begin filming of that movie soon. Now, one big piece of news that came out this week was we had always heard that Michael Keaton was going to be part of that project. Yep. That Michael Keaton's version of Batman was going to be in that Flashpoint style movie. So the Flashpoint storyline in the comic books of Flash going back in time. Do we get Ben Affleck in that movie? He's still rumored to be part of that project. But Michael Keaton came out and said, officially said, yes, they've talked to me, but I never really said I was doing it. I'm still thinking about it. Oh. I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, Huge. wow. He, he came out and said, yeah, that that's in my drawer wow. somewhere. I've got a script to read or I've got some theories, but I can't. I, I never agreed to anything. I can neither confirm or deny my involvement in the Flashpoint movie. So he basically came wow. out and said... Everything that everybody says is it, it's not officially. He says I got okay. He's got his own series right now. He's there's a new series he's filming right now on on one of the the uh, on Hulu or something that he's really involved with, and he's not sure if he's going to have time. So interesting, yeah, very interesting. So we'll see where that goes. There, there's a lot to be to be seen with the Flash movie, but that is going to happen. We know Black Adam is coming. They're going to start that movie soon. Big announcement this week was we got a new casting for that movie. Pierce Brosnan was cast as Dr. Fate for that movie. Dr. Huge Fate. Huge yep. character. Yep. Huge character in, in the uh, in the DCEU and in the, in the DC Comics. Dr. Right. Fate. Pierce Brosnan is playing when that was a casting that we heard this week. So that movie is... Great coming. actor. Love Pierce Brosnan. He yeah. was a great 007. I, I mean, I, I he's just a great actor. Remy, Remington Steele. I mean, he's it 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 great. Uh, the Thomas Crown Affair, lots of great. Movies. That's a great movie. Have you, you see, yeah, oh, isn't that a great, good movie? Great movie? That's a sleeper, people. If yeah. you haven't seen that, Thomas Crown Affair, that's a sleeper. That's a great movie. So that's coming. We know the Black Adam is coming. We know that Shazam Two: Fury of the Gods uh, is coming out in June of 2023. So that's a couple years away, but we know that's coming. They've already had some castings about that movie. They're going to be starting production of that movie soon, starring uh, Zach Levi as Shazam. So that movie is on the slate, and that's already in pre-production. It's going to start filming very shortly. I think the, Shaz- uh, the Black Adam movie is going to be a standalone, right? Right. That, yeah. That's going to be done by itself. And they're going to develop that as the group. Um, what's the group? The group that Shazam, I mean, uh, Black Adam is a part of, Dr. Fate, Hawkman. Um, oh, JLA? Yes, Justice League of America? Justice League of America, right? Well, Black Adam was really never part of that, but Dr. Fate was for sure. Yeah, so, and yeah. Uh, Hawkman is in, a yeah. part of JLA, Black Adam. Right. Yeah. Yep, so we'll see that for sure. Uh, we know Aquaman 2 has been greenlit. We don't know anything about timing, production, anything about that. Nothing. But we know it's been greenlit. We know the like Wonder Amber Woman. Amber Heard, that smoke show is a right. part of it or not. We know Wonder Woman three has been greenlit. We don't Green know anything lit. about that, but we Smoke know Patty show. Jenkins, I, the director. I gotta have that. Yeah, I gotta have a redemption. Right. That whole movie, Wonder Woman three, is a redemption movie, right? Don't right. But we know Patty way? Jenkins is working on a Star Wars series for Disney Plus, and so she's gonna be tied up for a while. Yeah. So we don't know when that's gonna happen. I'm excited for that. And we've heard rumors of the second or next Superman movie, Man of Steel two, has been greenlit. We don't know. 
Is Henry Cavill involved? We don't know. Who's uh, directing it? Don't know any of that. vision? It's not Zack Snyder. We right. know that. Right. So, But we do know that that movie is on the slate at some point in time. But that's all we know from DC right now. Okay. So they try to keep us excited. But, yeah. you know, there's something that some things we know are coming and some things are about Let's to just start hope filming. the Titans comes out soon and we're into DC again. Let's hope. All right. And then the, another news item for the week we did get, again... Theory crafting here. We always thought that Spider-Man No Way Home was going to be this multiverse version. Right. And we did get some leaked set photos this week from the set. So they're Any filming Miles that. Morales? Nothing? Nothing yet. But we do see Andrew Garfield in a Spider-Man Uh-oh. uniform leaked set photos with him and Tobey Maguire. And, no, him, not him and um, uh, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Together on the set, both was in Toby in the background crying. No, I don't know. No. We didn't see Toby. We okay. didn't see Andrew Garfield. So I like it. You know, uh, Tom Holland has come out officially and said, "Oh, I don't know anything about a multiverse. I don't know anything about Andrew Garfield, Toby McGuire be part of this. I would know because I've seen the whole script. I would." Know. He's lying. Of course but, he is. Right. He's learned his lesson. Right. So you know, we did see leaked set photos of Spider-Man No Way Home featuring Andrew Garfield. So man, I like that. This kid. is going to be. I like yeah. Tom Holland. He's a good kid. Yeah, I like All that right. kid. So that's news. Any, any other news that you want to talk about this week, Tom? Uh, no, that pretty much covers right. it. That's great. You did a hell of a job. A lot, lot happened this week. I so think I great. texted you some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throughout the week, I love texting you stuff that I find. So our topic of the week this week would be a real quick one. We want to talk about who the power broker is. So they the the idea of a person called the power broker was announced in the Falcon and Winter Soldier episode this week. So who so, is so the give broker? the audience what the comic book version of the power broker is. And then I'm going to give you my theory. As it relates to the show. As it relates to the show. That'll be great. Because okay. I think what... And it's not Mephisto, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in the comics is very different than what's going on in the show. And, I, and I, I love the fact that Marvel's drawing from these comic book stories and using these characters... In a way that fits the vision they've painted out in the shows and the movies. Yeah. I love it. It's great. Look, you don't have to do exactly what happened in the comics. That's fine. Just do it well. Right. And they've done that historically throughout the series. All the movies. But those characters done. have such rich stories behind them. At least pull some of it into the show. Right. right? So in the comics, uh, the power broker was a character. His name was Curtis Jackson. So he was part of a criminal organization called The Corporation. Yep. Right, so the corporation was well, you know kind of a, a massive criminal organization. Uh, think of a kind of mafia style criminal organization. He founded his own company called Power Broker Incorporated, and he said, "I'm going to create this company that's going to offer the ability or abilities or enhanced uh, strength and speed to people for in exchange for money." Right, right. So he hired a mad scientist. His name was Dr. Carl Malice. So we saw a version of Dr. Malice. If anybody had watched Jessica Jones Jessica on Jones. Netflix, Dr. Malice was who they used as the person responsible for giving Jessica Jones her powers. And her mother. And her mother. Super strength, super speed, all these other things. They, he was the one who was, he had a special process that he used to give these people super enhanced abilities. Her mother, she went through it. And then uh, the version of Mockingbird. Was it Mockingbird? Who was the... Uh, the, her friend who ended up uh, getting powers. What was her? It wasn't my cat. Name. Something um, um, with the white. Uh, oh God, what was her name? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull it hey, here. Pull it in the comments. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Jones. Put it in the comments. Her friend, the blonde chick, smoke show. By the way, <laughs> uh, what was it? Um, Hellcat. Hellcat. Was it? Yeah, Hellcat? I, knew I, would, I yeah. knew I would pull it. Never mind. Don't put it in the comments. We got it. The professor. So, of course. So, yeah, so, uh, but we saw a version of that scientist in that Jessica Jones series. But anyway, the Power Burger hired this scientist and he had a method for enhancing individuals and giving them super strength or enhanced abilities, right? We talked about this a little bit last week. That process was so dangerous that more than half of the people that went into that process more either half. died. Or, or became not, extremely deformed. Right. Like they would have like an extra limb or... Now, didn't he do something to himself where he became this like weird blob? He, well, he used that process on himself as an emergency because he was being threatened or attacked. 
and he used the process on himself at one point, and he became so muscle bound that he couldn't even move. Yeah, like literally, like imagine having so many muscles that you can't even physically move. No, no I can imagine that. I'm yeah, right, you're there. right there. I'm almost. Well, you know, I'm right there. The accelerate guys are just licking it up, right? Yeah, you know, Josh is doing right, a hell right, of a job. The, the boot camp is making yeah. its, <laughs> making its money right now. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so he 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 founds this organization. Says we're going to offer the ability. We're going to offer enhanced strength and speed and all these other things to people in exchange for money. There was a wrestling organization, I mentioned this last week, called Unlimited Class Wrestling. And that organization, you had to be enhanced to, to be, be a, a wrestler because everybody in there was enhanced. So if you weren't, you were just basically going to get killed. And you get a big payday for those right. fights. Right. So those fights, and so they were wrestling matches that they were showing off these people that were super powered. And so he exclusively sold his enhancement to these individuals who want to be part of that wrestling organization and they would come in and get enhanced and as i mentioned more than half of them would die or become deformed but he created these enhanced individuals and then he would addict them to drugs so they used this highly addictive drug and gave it to those people that he enhanced and said you need to continue to come back and get this drug because it's it's if you don't well, you'll lose your power lose your powers or something bad will happen right. to you You'll become deformed or whatever. The reason why you survived is because you had this drug in your system. And so he used their addictive nature of this, the addictive nature of this drug to keep... To keep them under control. Not only use them so he could call them and say, Hey, I need you to go and break into this building and do something for me. Or uh, I need more money. Right? So that's what he would do. How does it relate to the show that we're watching now? Professor? So the two individuals that we saw on the show so far, John Walker and Battlestar, who is Lamar Hoskins were both part of Unlimited Class Wrestling. They had both gone through the Power Brokers enhancement. So we don't think that's happened in the show so far. We don't think those two individuals in the show are enhanced, but we know in the comic books that they got their super strength from the Power Broker. Okay. So we know that. And now we've been told in the show that maybe these people that are part of the Flag Smashers organization also got their powers through that same process. We don't know how that is. Is it a drug? Is it an injection? Is it something that they went through? We don't know. We'll figure that out in the show. Yeah. But the power broker was somebody who could offer this to individuals. And that's what Sam and Falcon are really trying to figure out. How are these people getting enhanced and where is right. it coming from? And that's the power focus broker now. in the comics was somebody who did this. So that's where they were in the comics. This individual would offer these enhanced abilities to individuals for in exchange for money. How about the show? So you said you had some theories. So give them to me. I do. All right. You ready? Yeah. Thunderbolt Ross. I think he's obsessed with enhanced abilities. I think he's been obsessed since the Hulk. Uh, it, it would not be unusual for Marvel to throw a curveball at us and have the power broker step back from the comic and be someone that we've already seen. So do you I think, think the power broker is Thunderbolt Ross? I do. I, well, that's a theory of mine. I think that Thunderbolt Ross... That's he, huge. He, isn't that weird? But it, it might be true. He's, or, a, he's obsessed with this theory. He's obsessed with this We saw that the in, the, in, in the Incredible Hulk movie. And he shows up in um, Black, Widow. Black Widow. And we know that there's some kind of serum or something. She's, she's holding and carrying vials at one point in one of the scenes of the trailer. And we know that the, what's the room called? The Red Room. The Red Room. Uh, we think that those people are enhanced. So they were. Um, so that, that's one thing that they never made clear. And I think that's why he shows up in, in, in Black Widow. So Black Widow is enhanced. So she has been chemically or te technologically enhanced. And, and that's not something they've made clear. And we've always thought that she was just a spy and had, you know great agility but she is an enhanced person so everybody that's been part of that red room program is enhanced, enhanced to some extent and so great theory because in the incredible hulk movie we see that he unlocks some of the weapon weapons plus chemical to put into uh emil blonsky who ends up becoming the abomination. abomination and he enhances him through that process yeah. and it's very dangerous and you saw what happened to him you know ultimately you know he was Hit with gamma rays after he'd been enhanced with that chemical and became the abomination. So they signed on that guy that played the abomination for a series that's upcoming, and I can't remember what she Hulk. It is. She Hulk. Okay. Yeah. That's right. They signed him, and I think that's going to play into whether we get a 
Thunderbolts kind of vibe or series in the future. But I think Thunderbolt Ross. Uh, so are you thinking be. that's the big um, cameo, a, cameo slash a, Easter egg of, of yeah, Falcon and Winter Soldier? That's my guess. But, you know, I could be wrong. I was wrong about Mephisto. I was wrong about Nightmare. Um, but I think his obsession with the serum and enhanced... and the we Super know Super Soldier in the, program. Not just the Super Soldier program, but we know he used it on himself in the comics to become the Red Hulk. So I think there's something to do with that, and it would make sense that he would slip into the power broker type, you know, using that to enhance for his own. But well, what we know about that character in the movie so far is he was Thunderbolt Ross for a number of movies. Then he ended up becoming Secretary of State. Yep. Right? We saw that in the Avengers movies. He was Secretary of State. He was the one who in, enacted the Sokovia Accord. So yeah. we know he's a very powerful person. So for him to take on this persona of the power broker, that may be a, a, you know, kind of an alternate persona of, hey, I've got this program that I can offer to individuals, and it could be a government program. Right, so or GRS, the program that they're talking about now, he could be that. That would be a huge leader. Easter egg. I mean, if that ends up ah. happening, if Thunderbolt Ross ends up being the power broker, you know, that would answer a lot of questions. It would definitely, and because again, we saw him do this. So, for those of you that don't know, where was he during the blip? What happened to him during the blip? Right, the well, we know he was. Was he blipped away? We don't know that. That's we don't. a good question because we never saw him in Endgame. That, that's my theory. I, if it's right or if it's wrong, I don't know. But that that's, you know. That's a great theory. I mean, we know. The, Thank, I did something good. Yeah. yeah. Titanium. The, uh, the, uh, the Super Soldier program was retired when, when Dr. Erskine died. And then it became the Weapons Plus program under the government, under Thunderbolt Ross's supervision. Weapons Plus program ended up becoming Weapons X, Weapon X, which is what we got Wolverine and Deadpool and a bunch of you know, Agent Zero, a bunch of other characters in the comic books. That was an offshoot that was Canadian, and that the Weapons Plus program went and did their own thing uh, in Canada. That, that would called, tie that into what's happening. I, I don't stuff. know. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, so that's a great theory. I mean, Thank it, you. It, if Thunderbolt Ross ends up being the power broker, that's going to be huge. And it would be a huge cameo in the show for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. All right. Um, all right, well, that pretty good. You want the bell is rung. You want to end the show. I just want to say one more thing um, to all of our YouTube listeners that have stuck around and listened to the remainder of the show. We are going to pull uh, another winner out of our subscribers, and uh, our first winner. We just mailed off a big package of goodies from the swag wagon. Uh, she should be getting that soon. Uh, we pulled a winner out of the first one hundred. We've hit a thousand subscribers. Uh, I think we're going to go 1,500 subscribers and we're going to pull another subscriber's uh, name randomly and send them a, uh, a package of goodies. What do you think about that? Great. Here's That's what I cool. think you should do after this episode you pull a winner okay. and you announce it on Twitter. Great. Pull I'll a winner, that. announce it on Twitter. Here's the winner for this week, and then we'll do another giveaway at 1,500. At 1,500? A thousand's a big one, especially yes. YouTube. They so, consider that a big one. YouTube watchers, podcast listeners, Absolutely. if you're a subscriber on YouTube, you will be part of this giveaway. We will announce the winner of this giveaway on Twitter okay. after the show. Awesome. All right. That sounds great. Awesome. I love it. All right, right, well, the bell has rung, Professor. All right. Well, that's it for us. We'll be back next week for more Super Talk. To get in touch with us on social media, you can email us at supertalkpodcast at outlook.com or hit us up on Twitter at supertalkpod on Twitter. Until then, stay super, everyone. We're out. Thanks, awesome. YouTube. A thousand subscribers. That was great. Yeah, that's huge, man. That That's absolutely huge. Thank you, Studio G, G Studios, too. Uh, huge supporters. But thank you, YouTube. Hang in there. Click that notifications bell. Thank you.